This content is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. This video is going to be for those that want to update their CFW manually or don't have any CFW at all, and we have to do it manually. Or if my modified version of the AIO switch updater app did not work for you. So I just posted a video before this one about uh, updating to Atmosphere with the modified version of the AIO switch updater app. And if everything failed for you and you can't get back in, then you have to do it manually. So if you want to start from scratch, if you want to do things like that, this video is going to help you out. So if you look on my screen right now, above my head, I'm on the current switch firmware 20.1.5 with Atmosphere 1.9.3. Now, after we're done with this video, I'm going to come back here and we're going to be updated to Atmosphere 1.9.3. That's the latest version at the time of this video. You're still going to be at the same switch firmware 20.1.5 because we're only updating CFW. I know that's a question I always get from the comments. But after we're updated to 1.9.3, then you would be able to safely update to 20.3.0 because you already have the supported uh, CFW. That would be up to you if you want to do that. And if you're interested in updating to 20.3.0, uh, I will have a, a download link in the description. I mean, a link in the description to my video on uh, updating offline safely. So with that being said, Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is download these two zip files for today. And the third one is for my modified version of the AL Switch Updater app. If you wanna try that first, I'll have a link in the description to that video if you're interested. But if we're gonna manually update or start from scratch, we're gonna to need to download these two zip files. So if you look in the description down below, there's going to be several links. But for each of these links, you'll have uh, an option that says click here to download the other side AMS 1.9.3 and it'll take you to my GitHub page where you just need to look for the assets area. I wish I could show you, but my video gets taken down when I do that. But in the assets area, click on that link and it should start the download process. The same thing for the Hecate 6.3.1 will take you to my GitHub page and you can do the same thing. After you're done with that, you can have it moved to the desktop like I have done already. Now. We can open up the SD card. Now it doesn't matter how you open up your SD card as long as you're able to transfer your files successfully. I highly recommend using Hecate SD card tools if you have the option to do that. I never have any issues. You don't have to take out the SD card and even if you have a previous setup like I have here, it still uh, it would not mess up your Hecate uh, because it's going to update it for you uh, from there. But if you're starting from scratch, of course, if you have the SD card plugged to your uh, PC, you would have nothing in here. And that's perfectly fine because it'll work for both. But since I already have uh, an older CFW, we can update by editing the SD card. Now, a lot of people don't like doing this, but I like to do this because it minimizes a lot of issues that you may encounter. So a lot of people just extract over and replace the old files with the new for some reason. It doesn't work for everybody. But so to minimize that, I like to delete the atmosphere folder and the bootloader folder. And that's okay because my uh, Hecate bootloader already has everything set up and my atmosphere already has everything that you need. So the only thing I can suggest in atmosphere is if there's something that you care about inside contents folder, then maybe you have cheats, maybe you have uh, stuff for like the, the Super Smash Bros if it's available, you can uh, remove it because um, chances are that it does not work with the latest switch firmware. But just in case, if it does, and I, we're gonna delete the atmosphere folder, you can, you can take out your contents folder and just put it to the side for a little bit and then you can put it back in there and see if you don't have any issues. But of course, if you do have issues, then probably it's because whatever you have in here does not work for the latest switch firmware. So with that being said, after you have taken care of whatever that you want to keep, we can now go to the atmosphere folder, highlight it, and then also highlight the bootloader folder and go ahead and click on delete. After that, everything else can stay the same. Uh, we're going to want to extract these folders and we can go ahead and start with the other side AMS 1.9.3. Now with extracting software, I don't like using WinZip. For some reason, it just doesn't work for everybody either. But what does work for most or for everybody is 7-Zip. So 
if you want to follow along with me with 7-Zip, I'll have a download link to that as well. And with 7-Zip, I'm going to open the archive. And here we have all the updated uh, files for Atmosphere 1.9.3. We're going to want to locate this empty space on the root of the directory or the SD card. And you're going to want to highlight all of these files and folders in the new 1.9.3 and extract them to the root of your SD card. That's this empty space on the beginning of your SD card. And I put it down here so that way it doesn't accidentally put um, the new files inside of a folder. So if you have this, replace the files with the destination, go ahead and click OK, because those are OK to replace. And the main folders is the, or the main um, CFW is in the atmosphere folder and bootloader. So that now that we did the atmosphere, we can do the same thing for Hecate. So right click, 7-zip, open archive, highlight both of the files and extract them to the root of the SD card. All right, so I'm going to replace the files in the destination if it's there. Like I said, if you're starting from scratch, you don't have to deal with any of that. And we're pretty much doing the same thing. Now, uh, just to let you know that I have renamed the Hecate 6.3.1 to payload.bin. And I've also replaced it inside of Atmosphere folder for the reboot uh, underscore payload. So though every time you reboot the payload on Atmosphere, it'll go back into Hecate. And also with, uh, with the Fusey bin, I've updated it to the Atmosphere. But I have these packs just in case uh, they're separated because of my AL switch updater app. But just in case those of you that do not want to use Hecate, you can only use Atmosphere if you like. So that's pretty much it. Inside the switch folder, I added my uh, reboot to payload. That's for Mariko devices that use mod chips. And it's just a simple app that just does a restart. So it's supposed to restart and whatever your mod chip looks for as a payload, then uh, it'll reboot to that. So it should go back to Hecate unless you have to configure your mod chip for it. Other than that, we are good to go. And let's test it out on the SD card. So I'm going to eject and let's get back on to the to Hecate. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention something real quick. The payload.bin that comes with my 6.3.1 zip file, this payload.bin you can use to update your Tegra RCM GUI for injecting into Hecate or your RCM loader. So for example, with Tegra RCM GUI, if you're still using this, for you people that use the mod chips, you don't need to use this. But just in case you're starting fresh, you would have this Tegra RCM GUI, click on this file browser and locate the payload.bin file, put it somewhere on your desktop and upload it or update it, I mean, and then you would be able to inject into the newer uh, Hecate. So just wanted to let you know that I forget because I use Hecate SD card tools. I don't have to take out my SD card, so I don't have to use the uh, Tegra RCM anymore. So just letting you know. Okay, so after you inject payload, or if you're using Tegra RCM GUI, you would um, enter the screen, or probably a screen before this that's asking you for your time and date. Just set your time and date. Uh, it's a one-time thing. You won't have to see it again. But you should be here, and it should say 6.3.1. I know that the screen is blurry, but I'm just using this as a reference for um, using Hecate. So. Once you're updated, you should see 6.3.1. And um, if you have an EMU MMC, you may need to enter that option and then enable it if it's disabled. But if you don't, then we can go ahead and continue. All you need to do next is just click on, uh, it's hard to do it backwards, payloads. And here you have uh, several options to enter CFW. Well, one of them, the first one is OFW, and this option is to go into your switch as stock. And people like to use this to go online because there's no CFW active on there. The second option is CFW with Fusey bin. The third option is um, same thing, but with EMU MMC with Fusey bin. The fourth option here is uh, now package three that's been updated with Hecate. And it's with uh, Sysnan package three. And the last one is package three with EMU MMC. Now, I know it might be confusing with all these options, but the reason why I did this is because for some reason, for some people, it works with Fusey Bin and others, it works with Package 3. So I have everything set up to work with all of them. So if one of them doesn't work for you, then go ahead and try the others. But um, 
since I use the Fusey bin, we can go ahead and start with this option first and see if it works for you. And it should boot with no errors. Okay, so back on the switch, if everything went well, you should have no issues, but we can check to see if we're now updated with Atmosphere 1.9.3. And if we go down to system settings, we should have the former version 20.1.5 still, but now we're updated to 1.9.3. And I have an S because I am using my CFW on SysNand. If you have an E, that's because you're using yours on EMU MMC. There's no difference. My pack will work with both. And also, um, I do have protections uh, to help prevent y'all from updating in the future. So you do not have any access to um, network with SysNand. So those of you that like to play on uh, regular OFW, then uh, you would have to remove a host file on the Atmosphere folder. But now you can safely update to 20.1.5. And my uh, all my packs have everything that you need that in order to work with what CFW is. So the best example is if you have any type of folders and they work, then you should be good to go or any type of already pre-installed things. But let's go with the folder. It's asking me to update for 20.3.0, and but I'm not gonna do that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on start software and it should work just fine. So that's how I know that Atmosphere 1.9.3 is working and you should be good to go to update to the 20.3.0. But I did that on my previous video with the AO Switch Updater app. Now, if you wanna to update to 20.3.0, that would be up to you. You can either probably do it uh, with Nintendo Network if you want to, which I don't recommend, but you can also do it offline with Daybreak. And if you're interested in updating to that, then I will have a, a link in the description to my video that shows you how to update um, to a newer firmware. It'll probably be a video that has an older firmware, but the process is exactly the same. Uh, so that way you can update to 20.3.0 if you're interested. But other than that, everything is working for me and I hope everything is working for you as well. Let me know if you have any issues. I can help you out as best as I can. And uh, let me know if it does work for you or if um, the AL switch updater didn't work for you. That's why you came here. But uh, other than that, uh, let me know if it works. And thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.